Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my modern C++ series. In today's episode, we're going to continue talking about concepts, this time doing another demonstration of a sort of concept here that's getting a little bit more advanced as far as we go here. But again, we're making little progression step by step by step. So if you haven't seen the previous videos, I'd encourage you to check those out or check those out on courses.mshot.io so you can go ahead and track your progress and make sure that you finished all of the different concepts lessons. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive onto CPP reference here. Again, we're going to be looking at the concepts uh, idea or the concepts library, but today we're just going to jump into code here. But I am on this page here because I do want to do something with our containers here and actually write a concept that I'll apply to containers that have specific member functions here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a few of these like vector. Uh, let's go ahead and open up maybe uh, deck here is a good one. And what I want to do, basically do is write a little function here that has similar member functions, or rather a concept that models things that are the same here. Now, you'll notice that the standard library does a pretty good job of just like naming things well, uh, which is a good thing to do, meaning that there's consistent naming, like there's functions like push front and push back here. Uh, in fact, push back is the one that we're probably uh, very familiar with. Uh, let's see, where is it? Here it is, push back, and I'm in the deck here. And in vector, of course, hopefully you're familiar with push back. Otherwise, you can check out my uh, STL videos here. So for instance, if I want to write some uh, generic function that makes sure that I can just, you know, push or add, or, you know, maybe I want to rewrite the type or something. Uh, how could I check for, you know, these functions to exist? So that's going to be the basic idea here. So um, let's go ahead and uh, just kind of start modeling this here. So again, what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I want some template. Uh, I'm going to take in some type name. This is going to be the, uh, you know, whatever that type is, vector. Uh, so T equals, you know, vector, deck, uh, etc. cetera. And um, let's go ahead and call this function something like uh, add to. Okay, for whatever reason, I want that uh, or that's consistent with other data structures that I'm using and I want to make sure I have a consistent way to, to use these libraries. Uh, maybe that's the way that we're uh, setting this up here. So uh, what the add to uh, function is going to do here is let's say that it's going to take uh, by reference that type here. Uh, let's just call it the container here and it's going to call on that container uh, pushback uh, and we want to take in whatever value that we're going to push back here. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's, let's be generous to ourselves. Let's just say they're always going to be integers, uh, and let's just push back the integer here. Okay. So make this a little bit easy, uh, for ourselves here. Uh, let's go ahead and compile this here. Let me get to my compilation. There we are. Okay. So this code compiles. That's good news. Uh, and let's actually use it here. So let's create a vector V one, three, five, uh, seven here. Uh, let's create a deck uh, D here. And let's see, I believe we can use a initializer list on it as well. Uh, so we got to include these types here, deck and vector. And as I showed, both of these have pushed back here. Uh, so we shouldn't have any trouble here. Now you'll notice I'm leaving this, uh, you know, requires here. We'll fill that out here. Uh, but we want to make sure that this works here because we'll test this out with, you know, some other type here. Uh, so that uh, compiles so far so good. And let's do add to uh, our container V. Uh, let's add nine. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for our uh, container D here. So far so good. And let's write uh, just for kicks here a little print function. We'll write it as a lambda just because we like to, uh, you know, practice our, uh, you know, whatever we're learning in this uh, series here. So let's say the container <laughs> uh, in, in many different ways here. And I'm just gonna write a for loop here. Uh, we'll take the element, we'll take it by value here from our container. And we're just going to write out uh, the elements here. Okay. And let's put a space in between each of them and an end line here. And then finally, let's call print on V and print on our deck here. And let's see if they are equivalent here. Uh, oh, let's see here. I gotta make sure I do see out here. So we're moving at world record speed here. There we go. Uh, yep, looks like our add to function is working fine here. Okay, uh, now let's go ahead and ooh, let's try out some other containers here uh, for list here. 
Let's try that one out. Uh, Ford list. And again, if you're not familiar with these, you can check out on this playlist somewhere. I've got all these here. Uh, can I initialize it as such here? Uh, oh, it looks like I can here. Now, can I add to it? Do I have a pushback on it? Uh, let's go ahead and see. Does that work? Uh, yeah, okay, required from here. Uh, this class here has no member named pushback, okay? Um, so this is a pretty good error, error message actually here uh, that's telling us, yeah, we just don't have this member function here. But what if we wanted to uh, you know, catch this otherwise or enforce it or otherwise sort of use this as a signal to us if I you know, have other container types that I want to capture? So it looks like at the very least, you know, on this, uh, you know, templated type here, I'm able to get a pretty good message here. But now I want to actually have the concept here, okay? And um, let's make this just a little bit more, uh, you know, just to write this from scratch here. Uh, type name, template, uh, type name. So here is our concept to check for uh, push back here. Uh, again, I'll just make it T here. And the concept is going to be, uh, you know, has push back. Okay, uh, as a member function or whatever here. Uh, so we need to require something here. So this is the first time that we're gonna write something that's not just a like constant expression here, uh, but we can actually have parameters here. And then I can have whatever my uh, test is here. And basically what I like to think of this section is uh, if whatever is here compiles, then it must be uh, valid, okay, in a sense here. Um, so that's how you can kind of treat this uh, section here. Um, in other languages like D that have this, there literally is a trait that just says compiles, right? And that tells you that this is valid, right? So, so we would be able to capture this concept has pushback and uh, it would tell us, yeah, can this compile? Just like our compiler gave us this message dot pushback that says, yeah, this container, this thing that I'm trying to do with my forward list here that I passed in didn't have, uh, you know, this this member function here. So I'd be able to capture it and be able to capture the exact reason why with my concept has pushback, okay? Um, so in order to write this, let's just go ahead and pass in then our uh, type here. Uh, and that is going to be the container here. Uh, and let's go ahead and see if I can do something like t dot uh, push back here. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, what am I pushing back though? How do I figure out like I need to put something here? Like I could put it in zero. Uh, and that, I don't know if that's going to be. Uh, very useful to us. Oh, and I got to fix one thing here. I got to put in container. Sorry here. Uh, push back. Um, okay, so let's see if this helped us at all here. I mean, I'm passing in zero here. I mean, that's again, assuming integer. So we're being very, very kind to ourselves uh, for whatever the type is. Uh, we'll get to that here. But let's see if I put in my requires clause uh, and then I add in uh, has pushback. Uh, for the type here. Let's see if that's going to capture it. And basically I want the compiler to fail because I have my own custom uh, concept here. Yeah. And now I am getting a little bit more here. Uh, my add two again, L for list at nine here. Uh, it's not working here. It's saying, Hey, um, you know, I, I don't have this uh, constraint satisfied. Now, where do I have it here? Right. Error, no matching function call for add two. Okay. So that didn't work here. Uh, and then at line 17, right, my add to can edit here, requires, has pushback, add to, uh, right, didn't work here. So a template argument uh, detection substitution failed, right? That's the, you know, all this stuff that we learned here. Constraints not satisfied in our substitution requires, uh, has pushback. Okay, so that's telling you exactly what happened here. Uh, that's giving you like a little bit more information here. And I think these messages will get a little bit more understandable over time, uh, which is the hope with concepts. Again, I'm using a little bit, uh, what version of G++ am I using here? Uh, 13, so a little bit old. Um, and I think the messages got even better here, so I can show those. Uh, but this is with the, the, the version of 23 that I have here. Um, so again, it's just saying that this is invalid here, uh, which is no problem. Uh, so that's great, we can capture that. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and push this just a little bit further here. So let's say this is, uh, you know, not allowed. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this here. Um, okay, and uh, oh, I got to get rid of my add here. All right, so this one won't work here. And let's just go ahead and rearrange this just a little bit to keep in our scope what we care about. Okay, um, but all of a sudden this 
template constraint is kind of, it's not as specific as it could be, right? I'm just saying, can I push back zero? So what if I actually want to push back uh, test, like if there's a specific type, right? Because I could have another constraint on this that says I can only push back like small values, for instance. So if you watch a previous video, we talked about that. We could have a constraint that says, hey, you can only push back uh, values that are smaller than eight bits or bytes or something. Otherwise, you should use this other container for whatever reason. Um, so one thing that we can do here is we can, as part of our requires, right? This is just a parameter list. We can, uh, and I have T here. So what can I do with T here? Uh, and you'll see this in some code. This always confused me for a while. Um, but let me show you, you know, if I want to figure out what, what the type of the thing is that this thing is storing, uh, I can look at the value uh, type here, right? And then I'm just assigning it a name here for V here, okay? And then I just want to see, you know, if I'm able to push back whatever that value is. Okay, now where does value type come from? Uh, again, this is why I have CPP reference open uh, on vector here. Um, and if you scroll through here, right, you'll see the member types. There is a member type value type here, right? And you can use this for other stuff like, uh, I don't know, size type or whatever, or, you know, pointer or, or whatever. But uh, again, value type will tell you as part of the definition, like what it's actually storing here. So, so that can be useful, uh, for various metaprogramming things, uh, as they come along here, but now this will, test, you know, does this code effectively compile? So for that container, can I push back something, right? And then, you know, we could have, you know, other tests on, you know, if this value type is some certain size or something that this would fail or not fail. Okay. And this works here. So, so there you have it, folks. This is our most complicated uh, concept to date here, but kind of an interesting one. And in that we wrote this has pushback function. We again use our requires clause, but this time we parameterized it here on a T had some other parameters. And then we basically just said, Hey, if whatever's, you know, within this, uh, you know, the curly braces here, the scope. And, and again, we can't have like loops or complicated stuff here, just true or false stuff. This is just going to treat it as like, yeah, this compiles, this is valid code. It doesn't do anything. This doesn't actually push back anything. This is just checking to see that it compiles uh, or not. Uh, but anyways, we could use it for various uh, containers like vector and deck and so on. Alrighty, folks. So there you have it. Uh, hopefully that was a fun concept to write. Hopefully you're getting a hang of this. Uh, maybe we'll do a little challenge in the next one. So stay tuned for that. Stay subscribed. And as always, if you're enjoying these lessons, check them out here. Courses.mshot.io. You can track your progress. Make sure you're knocking out all those concepts lessons. And uh, yeah, let me know if there's other interesting or useful concepts that you've used. If you're seeing these popping up in the C++ standard, a whole bunch of places that you think are useful, I'd be very curious to hear about that. Anyways, folks, thanks for your time and attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.